thumbs up and communication back there. WSA will we'll share. Um. So, so sorry for that interruption. We're streaming live, so we wanted the folks at home to also hear the wonderful information. Um, my name is Danielle, by the way. You might have gotten emails from me. I'm so sorry for the interruption. No, it's Just fine. wanted the communications for those who are online. Uh, there it is. It's working now. I think everybody can hear me, anyways. <laughs> Number two, thank you. Okay, so my name is Danielle Cherry Hoover for those who are online, and I am so sorry for the uh, abrupt pivot. We just wanna make sure those who are online can hear and see correctly, just like you all in the room. Thank you so much for attending. Um, I am the public engagement and outreach uh, consultant to Connect Douglas, and I'm very happy to be here. And without further ado, the director, uh, Ron Roberts. Thank you. Take two. Um, again, uh, my name is Ron Roberts. I want to thank Danielle for putting this together, and also David Good sitting over there. He does a lot for, for our DBE and Splost Outreach, and I'm supposed to stand over here. All right. Thank you. Um, yes, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, Connect Douglas, just real quick. Um, we are a, the transit agency for the county. Uh, as I mentioned uh, a minute ago, we do fall under a different uh, DB uh, status. It's uh, under 49 CFR. Um, that's part 26 for uh, Federal Transit Administration. We have put together a disadvantaged business enterprise goal for 2024 to 2026. Um, some of my, I think my staff is, is, is out there, but uh, we're projecting about uh, 2.7 million dollars uh, over the next three years with uh, uh, FTA assistance of $1.7 million, which includes a 50% match of operating funds and 80% match of capital funds. Um, this is, uh, that's our methodology. So the, the way that we, that FTA requires that we compute our DB participation is the base figure is calculated by dividing the relative availability, availability of businesses that we're, we're looking to do projects for for the next three years. And right up front, I just want to tell you that we are projecting to do, we have to buy, but we got to buy buses. We're going to buy some buses to replace the, the ones that are in service currently for the four routes that we provide. Um, we're going to need software. We're going to need uh, personnel counters on the bus. We're going to need, um, uh, we're going to actually have to, to go out and we're getting some uh, shelters, bus stops. So we're going to need DBs that can put the pads in, put the shelters in. But our DBE goal for the next three years is 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 uh, two point six three percent, and that's that's because of the nature of the projects themselves. WSA is going to have a different different take on that. But I just wanted to tell you what ours was. And again, I wanted to welcome y'all here. I, I'm so happy to see so many people that are interested. Now, that's just what we had to put together in order to to get to through our FTA triennial, which is a, a three year audit that they do on our program. And uh, this is a requirement under, the, under that codification that I mentioned. Um, we, do have, uh, we do have some flexibility. We're in the, in the middle of the budget process. As many of you know, the county's going through the budget process currently. Um, so we might identify some other projects and things. That's just, we get dinged by the federal government if we are not close to what that percentage is. If it's up or down, high or low, they ask questions, so we try to get it as close as possible. But that's not to say that we wouldn't come up with some other things. Um, and uh, I want to introduce real quick, Eric Wright's in the back back there. He's our new deputy director working with me. Janet has left the room. She's, she's a bit of a, a shy bug, but she, she is quite knowledgeable in this and put, put our program together for, for us. Um, and just real quick, I don't know if you, if you guys have any specific questions um, of me about the transit agency and about the, 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 the work program. We are in the middle of currently um, uh, 
our DB goal, which we've been posting and had online, and we're looking for feedback and everything because we have to close. It's a process where we, we opened the public hearing about uh, 45 days ago, and now we're about to close it out, take it to the board to close it out, and submit this document to the feds. Um, that's where we are in the process. So this meeting started as part and parcel of, of what our requirements for the feds are, but then we were able to add in, at David's, David's idea, to add in WSA, which is fantastic. So we're glad that they're here as well today. But, um, and I don't want to take up any more time than I need to because today is all about you. You've got, you've got Chris here from, uh, where's Chris at? There he's in the back. He's got his hand up. Um, he's here from DOT. You guys already have some of the forms to help you get to, to apply. We're, we can do, do some breakouts and, and, and work with you. He's here to do that. Um, and before I turn it over to, uh, I think Latonya is going to follow me. Latonya Ammons from Purchasing. Our director of purchasing, very knowledgeable, been in, in purchasing for many, many years. But if you have a question, any questions about uh, transit or any of our prog projects uh, before I step aside? Good. I like that. That means I, I was thorough in my, in my uh, resolution here. All right, so um, uh, LaTanya, would you like to uh, come up and um, uh, speak to this lovely crowd? I hope I gave you a good introduction. Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you, everyone. Um, first, I want to say on behalf of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, the County Administration Office, and all of the staff, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming out. As Ron has indicated, my name is Latarian Ammons, and I am the Director of Procurement for Douglas County. Um, I'm delighted that you're here, those that are here in person and those that are um, watching virtually. Um, I'm glad you're here to learn about upcoming projects and how to become a DBE certified vendor. Um, the procurement pro department is always working to expand our current supplier base, right? And we are always interested in forming new relationships and maintaining existing relationships. However, we cannot do this without you. And you are an integral part in making Douglas County successful. Um, in 2019, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners passed a resolution where our goal is a 15% DBE spend across the board. Ron spoke about um, items with Connect Douglas, but I just want to remind you that across the county, we do have a 15% DBE goal. As such, we need you, and we need you to become certified. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight some projects that are coming down um, in, out of my office in 2023 um, 20, for this last half. I will have a um, solicitation for a design build of a corner facility, a design and build, design and construction bill for a E911 facility, one for a landfill transfer station, janitorial services. There's an open bid right now for sidewalk construction, a new fire station, and a county external auditor. And I promise you, that is not the end of my list. <laughs> I just wanted to highlight those. So you may be asking, well, how can I become a vendor? Right? How can I become a vendor here? The list. I'll go, I was asked to go over the list one more time. And then I'll explain how you can be, how you will be notified of the actual projects. So the first one is a design build for a corner facility, design build for a E911 backup facility, design build for a land, landfill transfer station, janitorial services, sidewalk construction, new fire station, and a countywide external auditor. Okay, so there are two paths to become a vendor here in Douglas County. The first one is, I want to ask, is you just submit your vendor application and be a part of our database. Is that a black hole? No, it is not necessarily a black hole because sometimes uh, other directors in a department come and we have to have a minimum of three quotes for most of our services and maybe the director only knows one particular person. And so we look in the database to see if someone else has registered to say, hey, I can provide this service as well, and then we will reach out to you and ask for a quote. But there's no guarantee when you submit an application that you're automatically 
a vendor, okay? The second path is to respond to a solicitation. So what I, the list that I just gave are public solicitations. And public solicitations are posted in the Douglas County Sentinel. And then there are also, our solicitations are posted on a website called BIDNET, B-I-D-N-E-T. And you can find the link for Douglas County on the Douglas County website. So you don't have to write it down, just go to the purchasing department. And also our bids are located um, <clears throat> and posted, most of them on the Georgia Procurement Registry. Now, with all that being said, so one may think, oh, well, I'm not sure if I can be a, a vendor. Well, yeah, there's still a pathway, right? So even if you aren't selected to be a prime, which is the one that is awarded, let's say one of these construction contracts, and you, you're not in the construction industry, please understand that they need people to do drywall, they may need electricians, may need someone to do uh, hauling of dirt. And so my point is that whatever your service is, if you may be a, you could provide the service for something that was one, number one, all of our bids are public, so it's posted. And number two, the person that we awarded the bid to is public as well. And so re-engineer it and say, hey, I do construction cleanup. Reach out to that particular vendor because they have what? a DBE spend target, and so make an introduction to those particular vendors, let them know about your particular service. And that is another pathway, indirect, that you can do business with Douglas County. Now, um, lastly, I have a couple of notes. When you are looking at solicitations, and this is in general, it is not necessarily specific to Douglas County because every entity is different. And if those of you were out in the spring with doing business in Douglas County in January, I mentioned this. We are now here in Douglas County, and you have the city of Douglasville. They have their own rules and policies and procedures. Cobb County has its own rules and policies and procedures. The city of Marietta, the city of Smyrna, the city of Austell. You understand? But my tip to you is, when you receive a solicitation, I want you to read it and walk away. Then I want you to come back and read it again for understanding. Put it down, walk away, and come back and read it a third time for comprehension. What I'm finding in my profession is there are a lot of people who are qualified, but you may miss the small steps. If the, if the document says that a bid bond is required, and you're great and you can do the work, and if you do not submit the bid bond, we can't consider you. And yet the language is there and sometimes we miss it. So that was my point of read, read, and read again. And also to be successful, if you have a question, don't assume anything, please reach out to the contact that is listed in the solicitation. Only contact the person who is listed in the solicitation. A lot of us, we control the information. We want to make sure you have accurate information. And if the policy is you are to reach out only to that particular person, and you reach out to someone else, and we find out we cannot consider your bid because it is a violation. So I just want to provide those few tips that we're here. And if you have any questions, I left, I have, most of you all have my card. Email works best. You can imagine why. And again, remember, your success is our success. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. This is the purchasing director. Um, for those of you who are online, um, Ms. Ammons. It's Celebrate Douglas County is the website that she just mentioned. Um, obviously, that you can the current bid opportunities and all the things that she just talked about are online as well. So, without further ado, I want to uh, present the next uh, person, who is David Good, Communications um, Director for Splost, Douglas County Splost. Thank you very much, Danielle. Um, Again, I'm David Good. Um, how many people in here know that we actually have a SPLOS going on here in Douglas County? It should be everybody, especially if you got one of these uh, things out. Yes, ma'am, I see you in the back. Uh, well, when I first uh, started with doing the SPLOS back in 2017, we were seeing that there were not a lot of minority firms that was being part of our SPLOS hit. So the Board of Commissioners, they decided, like, well, 
we still need to do something in order to bring in minority firms. DBE still did not come up. I believe around 2018, uh, one of our commissioners, uh, Commissioner Trinia Carthen, who's not a vice chair, that was something that she ended up pushing. And when Ms. Amos um, came in, she went ahead and put down the percentages that we needed for countywide. When it came to uh, SPLUS, we were around 10% minority participation. As of right now, we are around 75 to 77% ever since I've been involved really pushing and meeting people. So most of the people in here, I either already knew or I met you guys at one of our doing business in Douglas County. And that's where a lot of you guys got a chance to meet with uh, Chris Evans. Uh, one of the things that we really try to push to different people is, all uh, because, like uh, Latanya said, all uh, because you're not the prime, you can end up being the sub. Or you can end up just going, especially on the asphalt one. Uh, one of our larger minorities is SEI. They do a lot of the uh, road work. They're one of the largest um, DBEs that we have. And so that's one thing I got you, you guys, I want you to push. Um, can you go into the next slide, please? Uh, so this is the opportunities with the SPLOS program. Next slide. Uh, right now, we have about $34.7 million remaining from about $122 million that the county received in. The total amount was 175, which was split among the three cities we have here, which is Douglasville, got the lion's share of what was left, Villarica and Ostell. As you see, we had 103 projects. We actually had 171 vendors that worked on that 103 projects. And of the active projects we have now, which are 28, that's where we have the 75 participation from those firms that are both minority, women-owned, or they are DBEs. And of course, as Latanya had mentioned earlier, um, all because you're a minority firm, if you're not a DBE, you're, they don't see you at that percentage. So it doesn't matter at that moment in time. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the projects that we have over there, fire, EMS, and public safety radio system. The largest one has already been completed, which was a $16 million um, radio system that was installed. But right now we do have, as the time you mentioned, fire station number nine. Fire station number nine is gonna be built over there on SR6 and Douglas Boulevard. That is one location that we know there's gonna be a lot of things that's gonna happen. It hasn't even been graded yet. So any business that actually does any type of land grading, site work, all those different things, those type of firms can actually deal with fire station number nine. And then also we have fire station number 11, site improvements, that's in the construction phase right now. A lot of times when companies are doing different things at their site, they find out that they need some more work done. So they might end up, so you just can end up contacting these companies and finding out you know, what are some of the other things that you're working on. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the transportation uh, projects. Most DBEs, especially if they're going through DOT, you have to have your DBE certification to work on a lot of the projects that any GDOT money is tied to. So these are a list of projects. The one projects that, uh, that Ms. Amos did not mention is one that's active and still would be going on for the next 10 to 15 years. That is the Lee Road widening and extension. So right now you see the widening going from uh, basically Monier Avenue all the way out to, um, to Fairburn Road. That's, that, that's, one, that's phase two. Phase one will go from the I-20 uh, crossover to 78. How they're gonna get there, that's definitely what you guys can actually help them with. And then the road is also going to extend from where the Walgreens is on 92 all the way over there to uh, Bomar. Bomar will then be widened to take it on to um, Chapel Hill, and then from Chapel Hill, it will go on, on over to um, Bright Star. So that's going to be our large connector basically from 78 to Bright Star. So that will be going on for at least um, 10 years. But they have to end up doing design work, site work. Um, environmental studies. So all those different, and then you have to also have general contractors. So if you're not even involved in the lay's work of construction, you have, might have a management company. I met a lady today, she has a management company. That's something that she could be involved in if she wasn't a DBE. So those are things that's going on. Uh, next slide, please. And then finally, parks and rec. Um, our two, the two large buildings that we actually had built out here actually had DBE on each one. One was the Senior Center in Lithia Springs, the other one was Boundary Waters Activity Center over there um, next to Boundary Waters Park. So these are ways that you could become involved in because there's always something that's going to be built. Right now we have playground equipment be being installed. Uh, there's a minority company that is doing the um, site work there. So just make sure that you guys become involved. And uh, one more slide, please. And that is it. Uh, that, that's me at one of our larger events. And I really do appreciate you guys coming out. I spoke to some people. They said, yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. I was like, okay, I expect to see you. And every person that told me that, 
I see you guys in this audience. So again, I appreciate you guys. And again, it's David Good. And you can see all the projects on our website, 2016splos.com. And luckily for everybody in the county, there is a new spot that's coming on board. It's the 2022 spots that the voters voted on back in November 2022. When those projects go, go out, make sure you guys go online and find out what is going on. Go to any of your board of commissioners within this county. They will also be able to let you know what type of projects that are going on. And with that, um, I can turn it back over to um, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. How's everybody doing? Good, good. It's a plethora of knowledge. So if you left your uh, information up front, your email address, I'll follow up with each, each and every one of you, excuse me, with websites and more resources. Sound good? So we want to make sure to save enough time for CE&I. For those of you in the room who are already a DBE or have your DBE certifications, then there's a ton of uh, projects that you just heard about or resources to find the projects you just heard about. And for those of you who do not have your DBE certification, we're gonna talk about how we can get you certified. So I wanted to have the lion's share of that opportunity for Mr. Chris Evans as well, okay? So without further ado, we want to bring up Douglas County Watershed Authority, uh, Joseph Morancy, if I, don't want to mess up your last name. Mr. Morancy, if you don't mind um, uh, coming up and letting all the wonderful people know about the current projects um, right here in WSA. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, what are you doing? Hey, thank you very much. Again, my name is Joseph. You can just start the first slide. My name is Joseph Morancy. I'm the Senior Procurement Specialist for the Water and Sewer Authority. I want to thank every one of you guys for being a good customers and also for supporting our organization. We, right now, be working on a lot of big projects. Some of them might not be interesting to you guys, but if you are not already one of our vendors, I would encourage everyone to just go on our website, to call me or go on our website to apply to be one of our vendors and to be on the approved contractor list. One requirement that we ask for every project over $100,000 you have to have your Georgia utility contractor license. That's one of the requirements that we have that you need to have on that. Uh, next one. Right now we're working on a 50 year plan for water resources for the county. And I do say 50 years because we want to make sure that we have water for businesses growth and for population growth in the county. Uh, we're planning to have a 23 MGD, which is a million gallon per day, producing for water in the next 50 years. So for that, we work with the county and the city for future plans they have. Our capital improvement projects are based on a few steps, population growth, business growth, and also environmental conditions, like drought, for example. And who does not remember the drought of 2007? After that, we realized that we need to start planning about future of water for the county for the next 50 years. And the way that we have, I don't know if you guys know that, the only source of water we have in the county is where? No. Dog Weaver Reservoir, that's the only source of water we have. Shadawuchi is not one of them. Sweetwater Creek is not one of them. So after we realized that, and talking with the federal and state regulators, the only options we had was to increase our reservoir storage. Well, next one. That was the drought. And if you guys don't remember that, I do remember quickly about that drought. Next one. Our plan to increase the dam, which is our reservoir, is gonna be from 1.9 billion gallons right now we have for storage to 6.5 billion of storage. We raised the reservoir by 35 feet and I will give enough water to hold for the next, I hope the next drought or maybe not. Uh, next one. The project is gonna take in six steps. That's gonna be to primary intake, secondary intake of the dam, primary dam, raising the highway 166 bridge over the reservoir and also get different entrance at the rec complex. I don't know if you guys go fishing at the rec complex. That entrance is gonna be different and also the entrance road. 
that's going to be one of the biggest projects in the county for the next five years. We projected right now about $315 million for that project. So if you are not on our list, I would encourage everyone to be on that list because I would love for you guys to be part of that process. Next one. The next project we have is I-20 that David just talked about. We got involved in this project because we have about eight miles of pipe we have to move, sewer and water from I-20, because we have to move everything back from the road that it was on. So right now we are doing relocation, moving all the pipes from I-20. That's the first, the second phase that we talk about. That's why we are part of that project. Again, that project is keep on going on right now, and that will be done maybe in another two or three years, I believe. Next one. Talking about now about sewer, because we also do sewer in the county as well. Our South Central sewer plant, which is located on Highway 166 on Fastmere Road, that plant was built for three to six million gallons per day. Now we want to increase that. Again, population growth and business growth, we try to make it now to nine million gallons per day. That's process going on right now is about two million dollar project. That'll be done by the end of the year. Next one, a Sweetwater Creek, another wastewater plant. It's a small plant on the northern and eastern part of the county by Tributary Road. That's a small plant right now that we have. It's the most running at capacity. We have secured a three million gallon per day. We're now with Cobb County. We will send our, our, our access flow to Cobb County and so building a brand new plan that would cost about $100 million. I think it would cost more effective than just transfer our flow to Cobb County and pay that as needed instead of doing that. Next one. This is the line that we're going to take from our uh, Sewater Creek to Cobb County, about 11,000 feet of, of pipe we need to run to Cobb County. That goes behind the Walmart, Bless Bridge, behind Walmart. That's where the line be going. Next one. This is a few of our capital improvement projects. Again, all our projects are posted on our website and also on Georgia Procurement Registry. I would encourage you guys to look at that. All our projects are posted on those websites. And if you have any questions, please email me. Call me. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not sure of that. I know when the project will start, the next phase will start, whatever new we need to adjust and the size, we will be involved in that. As far as I know, yes. Yep. Again, we have water, wastewater, and stormwater projects. And those are the few things that we have. But also we have landscaping, maintenance, you know, the projects that we have going on. Everything's on our website. Any project you guys have, any contractor here who does any kind of work, please email me, call me, let me know what you guys can do. Because I don't know what you guys want to do. You let me know if you guys can do it or not. So that's something we can always talk about. Go ahead. Anything over $100,000, yes. I'm, I'm not going to answer that question because I don't know exactly why, but I can get back to you on that. You. I will get back to you on that. Any other questions I have? You see, and this is our, waste, this is our water uh, projects. Next one is our, our wastewater project and stormwater projects that we have going on. You have the next one. There's our sewer projects. The next one. And our stormwater improvement projects. Those are all the projects we have going on right now in the county that you guys can be involved in if you can do that kind of work. Again, our job, all our work are posted on our website. And again, I would encourage you guys to just look at that and let me know if you guys can do it or not. 
we have about the, the projects for Streetwater, uh, no, the Dogger Reservoir Dam, we have a meeting next Wednesday at the office on the 26th of this month at 10 a.m. We'll be talking about that project. If you guys want to come in and listen to the project, please do so. Again, July 26th at 10 a.m. at the office, 8763 Hospital Drive. Again, if you want to reach out to us, again, our project I posted on the website. We have a brand new uh, um, website posted. We are purchasing. You will see all those things posted right now. As you can see, there's a new one right now posted, construction manager at risk. That's what we'll be working on for the Dog River Reservoir. Again, we have a website, or even Ask WSA. Any questions you guys have, you can send it to askwsa.com and somebody will get back to you. Again, a phone number, and again, I give most people my phone number, uh, my email address, and my card. I also have a few applications to be on approved contractor list, but if you want, you can always email us, we will send you an application. Again, next one. Thank you for your time, appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So you've heard about the projects from um, some wonderful experts in their field. Let's hear now from a DBE such as yourselves or aspiring to be. So Essence, if you don't mind. So Essence is coming up and she's gonna give you her testimony. You may be in her shoes or um, currently being a current DBE or a future entrepreneur who's here today to get certified. So we're just going to do some brief Q&A um, so we can hear your testimony. Sure. So first and foremost, please introduce yourself sure, and your company. Sure. So my name is Essence Johnson and I'm with Intellectual Concepts. I'm actually the VP of Operations, but also I am a legacy. My mother started the company back in 2004 and um, we are a management consulting firm that believes in people, process, programs, and technology. Our focus is global public health and mobility engineering. Uh, we do a lot with intelligent systems. We do transit planning, we do operations assistance, we do CAD AVL, CEI. Um, my son is actually back there taking pictures and listening because he's the next legacy that we're building uh, about. Uh, we've been, again, a DB since 2013. So uh, we understand the process, we understand the journey. So I'm so excited to be here today. So not to put you on a spot, we know two things. Sure. One, you're a wonderful business owner. Yes. Two, uh, you are currently a DBE certified Correct. Per, um, Correct. business. So let me ask you this. What about Douglas County? Are you currently a Douglas County, listed as a Douglas County vendor? We are. We actually Perfect. do work within Douglas County. So I just wanted to give an example of all three things. There's a plethora of opportunities out there. So the more that you can expand, and I'll let you answer sure. that question, um, the more opportunities that you can hit. So with that being said, tell us about your DBE certification process. So again, we started way back when, um, actually at an event just like this. Uh, we were sitting and listening about how to do business. And at times, sometimes people that look like us, women, you know, kind of get lost. And I think it's important that, you know, the federal government has had this set aside for us to ensure that we have a seat at the table, but the seat doesn't stop with just getting a DVE. It starts with pounding pavement, shaking hands, and making people known who you are and the services that you can provide, and also building, you know, other DBEs as a prime. Uh, this process is, is tough sometimes, you know, when you're trying to build a business and you have a passion and you know you do good work, but again, we've been... 2013, we've had our ups and downs as a DBE, but we've learned so much, and these events are so important because it's networking. You never know who's sitting right next to you. Uh, you never know who might say, you know, I can, you know, have a conversation and talk about my experience, so you don't go through the same things that we've went through. And um, just for practical questions, mm -hmm. did you go through GDOT services, or did you go through MARTA? MARTA. Okay, so just so you know, there are two opportunities. We have GDOT here with CEI Services, um, who's going to do an excellent opportunity um, workshop to become certified. Just to give some background, there are two mm -hmm. entities to do certifications here in this area. Another question. Sure. 
did you find it beneficial after 2013 being a DBE certified company? Yes, there are some. Let me let me pause okay. there. Okay. Why? Again, it gives you a, it gives you a stepping stone. It does not give you a platform because it's it's like with a lot of things that are set aside for disadvantaged businesses. Uh, you have to continue the work. It's not just going to be your DB. So I'm going to give you this. Um, it's a tool that allows you to have a, I want to call it an equal playing field, um, but also it holds those big boys accountable for a set aside. And I think we have seen it through the last couple of years, how you know, the pressure is on for them to ensure that they have a certain percentage or a certain set aside for DBE, especially through the uh, President Biden's bipartisan bill that came out that's really putting you know, responsibility on those big boys to say, hey, what are you doing? And what I'm seeing now is if you don't have a DBE set aside in your proposal, it's not going to happen. So what is the saying? Uh, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready? Correct. So uh, congratulations to all of you who currently have a DBE and those of you who are just in the room because this is your day one to help preparing you to get ready. Correct. Um, what are your um, some opportunities or some experiences that you've had or are future planning um, with, with your DBE certification about grabbing those upcoming projects or thinking about mm -hmm. strategizing on, mm -hmm. on um, partnering for those upcoming sure. projects? It's always important to follow the money trail. If you know where the money is going and you are building relationships and networking, you already know where you're already prepared. Um, We've seen the growth. I mean, you sit on 285, you sit on 400, you sit on any road, you see construction. I mean, when I first got into this industry, you know, I was like, okay, transportation, transit, it's a bus, it's a railroad, it's a light rail, it's et cetera. No, it's a sidewalk. It's, it's a pipe. It's, uh, you know, if you want to know what time that you're, the bus is coming, that's all a part of transit um, or just Everyone plays a role in the development of a community. So again, it goes back to if you follow the money trail and you know where the money's coming out, I mean, the SWAS, 2016, you see it when you go to vote, that it's sitting there, that there's money coming, so there's opportunities. But the biggest thing is to network. Look at your industry and see the big players and the big boys, or start your own big boy. You can be a prime. It doesn't just mean that, you know, if a company has 700 employees. No, you can be a prime. You can go after it together. You know, we, my company and my mother's a true believer of coming in as small businesses under one. We are massive. So you mentioned a couple of, of, of tips. Follow the money, mm -hmm. or follow the money trail in particular. Mm -hmm. Absolutely get your certification. Mm -hmm. Give us one or two other tips. Use your voice be your own advocate. Because when you think of legislation, legislation will dictate what you can and cannot do to a certain point when you have a business, especially when you, the threshold for DB, I think now is what, $25 million of disadvantaged business. That's a, that's a, it seems like a large number, but if you get a couple of contracts, that's a large number, right? Um, and then $26 million really isn't because that means big boys can play in the same field that we are in. So you need to be an advocate for yourself. Um, that's going to the commissioner's meetings, having a conversation and really saying, I'm a small business in this community and X, Y, and Z is impacting me. Um, ensuring and asking at the SPLOS meetings. I mean, I actually sit on the Cobb County SPLOS uh, committee and I'm listening and hearing of sometimes the same organizations getting work. And it's, some of it is relationships, because relationships are key, but also it's because, you know, like Latani said, are we a vendor? Are we, you know, making sure that we're in the know? Um, so be your own voice. I mean, the, no one can tell, talk about your business but you. No one can share your story but you. Thank you so much. Um, without further ado, we do want to bring up Chris Evans, but does anyone have any questions um, for Essence while she's here? Great, let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. I do have a clarifying quick question. Um, Ms. Ammons, I know yesterday um, we were in a meeting, and you um, transportation committee meeting, and the question was posed about reoccurrence of, of uh, bids. If you don't mind, let me come to you. 
there was, I think, after how many years can a bid have to go, uh, a project have to go about out to active bid? So typically um, in this industry, all contracts start out as one year. And a lot of people have the language with the option to renew for four years. So ideally that is a five year contract. There's a couple of things. Number one, we cannot commit funds from a, as, a, as a public entity, I can't commit funds for the year 2016. They haven't even been approved and I don't know how much I'm gonna get. So that's number one, we, we, we just can't do that. Number two, the contracts are a year because if you as a vendor and you're not performing, right, according to the terms and conditions of the contract, yes, we can get out after year one, but it gives us the opportunity to unfortunately seek another vendor at the end of your term. You know, yes, there, you know, we help you along the way. And, but again, to answer her question, number one, the initial term is typically one year because we can't commit future funds. Two, we like to do a max of five years. And to Essence Point, a lot of times you have people who continue to, they have the business all the time and they, it, it appears that they are sometimes the vendor. That is why we need the community to um, submit bids. They're posted, they're public, but you need to know, well, where do I go to submit the bid, all right? So we need you to submit the bid. And then again, after five years, we're looking at it and saying, hey, you've been a vendor for five years. Are the rates still the best rates for my entity? When I say entity, Douglas County, is it the best, right? Things change in the community. Um, as we know, you know, last year it was, you know, Facebook five years ago and now it's TikTok. Right? So just imagine if I still had um, that particular contract with one entity, things change in the market. So again, we put out new bids because um, there could be a new vendor that's come to, to market. So you do have those you know, monopolies and then you have a new vendor out there and we won't know that a new vendor is out there unless we what, post a bid. But I also need that vendor to respond to the bid as well. Right? So um, I hope I answered that You question. absolutely answered the question. Mm -hmm. the, Okay. The reason why I brought you up here for that is I don't want anyone to be discouraged. Yes. She mentioned about big boys and following the money. Just because an entity does have a contract today, you're preparing yourself by being here today. In the next couple of years, when you're ready, you can go ahead and bid or partner for bids. So um, your, your, uh, uh, the current person could be your competition in a couple of years. So let me go here and then the next question. Can you state your name? Okay, my name is Crystal Dixon, and I have a project management consulting firm called Paradigm Project Leadership Group. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, does Douglas County have opportunities for small businesses who are potential subcontractors to interact and mingle and network with prime consultants who already have business with Douglas County? Because what I found is people hire who they know, the relationship. So unless you have opportunity to mingle and network with these primes, you can't build those relationships. So that's an inter interesting question. It's almost like you read my mind. But um, <laughs> I don't wanna say too much, but yes, I recognize that there is, that that is an issue. And I do have an idea to help address your question. Just don't wanna mention it right now continue to look at the website and continue, but um, right now we don't have that particular mechanism. And what she's saying is if you know XYZ construction company is always there, I will say this, there are some construction companies that do not know that there are DBEs that can help them. So it's sometimes a two-way street as well, right? And it's something as simple as, you know, we do a, we try to do a great job, but you know, you have the roads and the road construction, and then you have a DBE that does paving. And because I typically, um, I like to meet small businesses, and even though you email me and I may not respond, I do know you're there. If someone says, hey, I'm having trouble finding someone to pave, I'm like, well, I think I received an email about someone. You know, I can't guarantee the business, but you may want to reach out. So it is a two-way street and I have a solution that I plan to bring to Douglas County I'm just not prepared to speak on it today and it won't be 2023 <laughs> so you can be proactive as one yes. one, one, mm -hmm, yes. one moment and, and events like this and um, Miss Ammons in her office they do a great job of a, um, an event called doing business in Douglas County and it was this, just this past January. it was in January, January and the next January. event will be in January and it will be our eighth annual 
And I do also want everyone to be encouraged. Just because you're not a construction company does not mean there are not projects out there for you. There are print jobs. There, someone needs to hang a sign, don't they? Somebody has to print it. If someone's yes. uh, uh, lights. Mi- lights, if someone's milling mm-hmm. the road, they're not always the same company who's doing the print jobs. Or you have some branded polo shirts. Somebody needs to do that as well. So just because you're not a construction mm-hmm. company, I do not want to discourage anyone. That is correct. Thank you. I'm Amy McCoy, broker owner of my hometown Realty Group. So say we're not the ones that are out there providing a product, Mm -hmm. but we have our services. I'm now in Douglas County for 10 years and so have been trying to get myself into the government sector of being able to help Mm -hmm. in those avenues. Um, How do we prevent from consistently being overlooked? So officially, we're not being overlooked officially. Okay, Um, I've been in Douglas County for a year and a half and I am an advocate for small business um, just because I believe that small businesses really are the fabric of America. Okay, so a couple of things I just want to encourage. So number one, when you register for BitNet example, I mentioned that earlier, it is not just for Douglas County. You will receive notifications for every entity that uses BitNet. Now, there's another one. Bonfire. Register for Bonfire, B-O-N-F-I-R-E. And so I I re-engineer everything, okay? (laughs) Just re-engineer everything because I will sit down and say, well, who, what does Henry County do? What does, again, what does Henry County? County, schools, and every city municipality in, in Henry County. Next county, Cobb, every municipality, every school. Water. Oh, okay. Well, is Cobb Water part of Cobb County? So now I'm saying that there has to be some onus on you as the business leader, and I can give those tips. Now, what I um, would encourage you is if you have, let's say, a business that, I don't know, Parks and Recs could use, okay? What we do as procurement professionals is I don't necessarily tell Parks and Recs who to use. Hey, Gary, you must use. No. Because um, of the policies and procedures, if it's a $10,000 spend, they just need three quotes, okay? So I would suggest that you reach out to Gary. Everything is public and say, hi, Mr. Dukes, my name is, I provide, would love to offer you a quote for A, B, C, or D. So then Gary and his team knows that you are out there and that you can also provide the service. So then one other thing as far as necessarily being a prime and a sub. Being a sub is not a bad thing and I would encourage you that if most of your business is a sub, is on a sub status, that's great because guess what? That's how you learn, that's how you grow and I have a passion for networking. And then maybe one day your business has grown and now you are a sub. So I want to encourage you as well. It's almost like, you know, we have to, you know, crawl before we walk and before we run. So um, to um, um, to piggyback on what Essence said, yes, now you have it, you'll be certified. What's next? It is, everything will be a stepping stone. As we know in business, businesses succeed and some do not succeed. I don't like the term fail, just do not succeed. But let's say you have that networking opportunity, you have a solicitation, you may you know, um, check the box for one item, not check the box for another, you reach out, you put together a great solicitation and now you are a prime versus a sub. Thank you so much, Ms. Ammons. Thank you. It's okay. Mm-hmm. One moment, one moment, let's. Uh, Just like the federal government, some um, projects under a certain amount are not, do not have to be actually bid on, I mean, Mm -hmm. actually published. Uh, Do you all have a threshold or does all of you, does everything have to be? No, we have a threshold as well. Um, Our threshold, quotes are required for 1,500 to 50, generally. However, depending on what it is, I like to put things to the street. 
And that's what we call when we post a bid. I want to post it and hit the street so I can gain more competition. And then you'll be surprised at the people who are involved. So um, people do have a tendency, just like you do in your own personal lives, you only go to a certain store, you usually go to a certain store, you travel to another city, you're looking for that same store because you are you know, that's a reliable brand, right? It, it presents something. And then when somebody introduces you something else, you say, oh, I had no idea that it was out here as well. So it's the same thing. So that's why a lot of my projects I like to put out, um, but we just don't also have the time and the bandwidth to put out a $5,000 purchase. But that's why I was using the example of, if you have a service, reach out to that department head because a lot of their items may not go out to bid. I mean, the county does a lot of business. I'm on, um, solicitation number 27 or 28 for the year, but purchase order number, I'm at 5,000. That's a lot of business that's happened that has not gone out for solicitation. It's not going out for bid. Three quotes required from 1,500 to, to 50,000. Yeah, so, so if I need, um, oh, I don't know. not solicitations are all published and a solicitation result could be twenty thousand dollars I didn't know that when I posted the solicitation however if I receive three quotes and they're less than fifty thousand I do not have to go out to public bid I the department does not have to go out yes Douglas County mm -hmm. for 15 years. I feel like Jesus sometimes. You know how he couldn't do business in his own city? Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like right now. So, <laughs> But what I would say is what percentage of the business that we do in Douglas County are Douglas County vendors? I do not have that um, statistic. David has it for 2016 splossed. I don't have that statistic countywide, and I'll, and I'll write that down, and I'll tell you. Um, I like open competition for business, so, but I don't have, you know, like, as far as Douglas County um, employees. And the question becomes, too, if you, have re if you registered the business in Douglas County versus I live here, but my business is registered in Atlanta and has an Atlanta address. So um, I can't. It's kind of hard to, to get to that, you know, statistics because I live here, but my business is incorporated in Atlanta. Does that count as a Douglas County business? And if I was looking strictly at just the data, I would probably say not, especially without knowing, right? So to not um, prolong the day, because Chris is here to give you the true meat of what you came for, um, I do want to say thank you. I hope this has been a for informative but I'm excited about what's going to happen next because you're gonna leave here um, with some, some closure, right? For those of you who do not have um, a DBE, that is the point of today. We want you to walk out and say, hey, yes, now I'm a DBE, no more procrastination. If you don't have an accountability partner at home and that, that was our purpose for you to be successful. So again, thank you again. Thank you so much. So the spotlight presenter, Mr. Chris Evans, who is a part of G.CEI, uh, CEI, who uh, basically operates the DBE support services for GDOT or the Department of Georgia Department of Transportation. So Chris, could you come up please? So one quick uh, uh, update into the schedule is we want to maximize everyone's time. So we initially had breakout sessions for one-on-one -on -one information with Chris, but you all had had wonderful questions and we did not want to, to stop that. So we're, what we're gonna do is just make this more open-ended. And if anyone has a delicate application question, you can take it offline at another time. So for example, if it's, um, oh, my W-2 or financials and you're not comfortable asking with this audience, Chris's information will have everything out front, and please, 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 um, if you haven't already read, uh, signed in on the way in, do so on the way out, because I know small business owners here had a company to run. You know, we can't be all places at all things at all times. So feel free to um, leave your comment information and definitely your email address and name out front. Um, again, without further ado, Mr. Evans. 
Okay, so I'm hoping that by the time you leave today that you'll have all the information you need to become DBE certified, okay? If by chance you don't, you wanna make sure you have my phone number and my email address so you can contact me so we can have some one-on-ones in terms of some of the questions you may have. I asked uh, Danielle and Latanya if they could, if we could do it this way as opposed to doing breakout sessions because many of you are gonna have some of the same questions. Uh, I've talked to you, some of you independently as I walked in, that kind of thing about looking over the application and making sure that you, if you did, you have any questions that you could actually bring them up now so I could go through them. And I'm pretty sure many of the questions you have are gonna be pretty similar to the others, and that kind of thing. So that's what we're gonna end up doing. But I am gonna uh, do a statement, I guess, up front of what the um, qualifications are to become DBE certified. There are six things, okay, which are primary, the primary things you need to worry about. One of them is you're either woman-owned or ethnically associated company okay that's one two your personal net worth personal has to be less than 1.3 million dollars okay three your company's revenue over an average of three years has to be less than 30 million dollars four you have you have to be a for-profit company five you have to show accountability for your company in that you are running it and you also have to show independence. Now there are some other things that are there, but those are the primary things that you have to worry about, okay? Many of you, I, I didn't see anybody shake their head and get up and decide they're gonna leave, so I think you, you probably, all, all of you probably say, well, I can probably fit within that, and you can. The other thing I'll tell you is, I am here to help you through this process. The state of Georgia pays me to do that. They do not pay me to do it for you, okay? So that means I'm gonna answer all the questions you may have so you can do it yourself. And believe me, if you run a business, you can do this. It's, you know, understanding 15 pages, another five pages of the uh, personal net worth, I understand it. It's a little daunting you look at it. I've never looked at this before, that kind of thing. So we'll get through that though. That's what these questions are. You know, hopefully I'm gonna be here to answer the questions are for, okay? All right, so. Um, I asked, I told Danielle, we're just gonna stay in this room. There's no sense in doing breakout, that kind of thing. So we'll go from that way. Um, Is there anything no. on this page you wanna highlight? Okay, so primarily, um, the website you're gonna go to for this is www.gadbesupport.com. And that'll bring you here. You can go in looking for the application. Most of the site is really set up for people who are already DBE certified to talk about their DBE supportive services, what you get from DBE being coming, coming DBE certified. Just to highlight some of that, just so you'll know, we do your capability statement for you. We'll work with you. If you don't know what a capability statement is, it's a one-page resume of your company that talks about what your company is involved in, what NACE codes you have, how long you've been in business, that kind of thing. So we help you develop that, NACE, that, that capability statement. We also help you with, as, once you become DBE certified, with contracting. Let's suppose you get a contract and say, I don't know what this thing is saying. Give me a call, we get some people to help you. Go through that contract. We help you with Davis-Bacon, that's the accounting side in terms of how you go through uh, your accountability for all your rates and that kind of thing. We'll help you with that. We'll help you with estimating. So these are all the tools that you get once you become DBE certified. Okay, uh, all of them are on the website. You'll be able to go there and see those kind of things. Um, we also post, once you've completed your capability statement, we'll post it on our website. So as vendors and prime contractors are coming to find companies which do work that you may do, they'll have them right there readily available to see your capability statement. You also, in having access to the capability statement, be able to download it anytime, no matter where you are, send people to it and that kind of thing too. So that's the primary things you're gonna get here off of the website. We do training modules for DBEs. Uh, there must be at least, I'd say eight of them scheduled for this month already. But you have to be DBE certified in order to take advantage of them. 
That's why we're going to make sure all you guys are DBE certified so you can take advantage of them, okay? We do have um, some of the people mention, how do I get a chance to do a meet and greet with some of the prime contractors? We do that also. By having your DBEs meet with the prime contractors who have the jobs, and then, of course, you can have your own dialogue with them, okay? I will help with opportunities in terms of finding other opportunities. I'm going to mention a few in here in a second. How to find opportunities. Um, as Danielle and um, Latanya mentioned, what I would call ancillary support to construction. Not everybody's in construction business, you know. Just keep this in mind. GDOT is the certifying agency for the DBE program. That's it. That doesn't mean that everything you do has got to be associated with construction, all right? They're just a certifying agency. MARTA is also a part of that. MARTA supports GDOT in three counties, Fulton, DeKalb, and Clayton County, okay? Can I, can I ask a question just to reiterate sure. the difference because we're in Douglas County. Can you just repeat what you just, you just said about the certifying agencies? I know Essence, who was a DBE, who, get, who gave her DBE testimonial, she got certified under MARTA. So if you don't remi uh, mind, can you repeat that one more time? The certification for MARTA or the yes. county's MARTA versus... Yeah, I know it, for a lot of people it is very... I get that question just about once every week, as a matter of fact. Uh, how does MARTA fit into the DBE certification? MARTA, through a... Uh, agreement with GDOT is supporting GDOT in three counties, Fulton, DeKalb, and Clayton County. They're doing the applications for those three counties, for companies in those three counties. All the other counties will submit their applications directly to GDOT. One very big benefit of being in Fulton, DeKalb, and Clayton County is that their application is online. Marta, I mean, GDOT is <coughs> not. That means you got to mail all your stuff in. Don't ask me why. I know they're working on, a, uh, on an electronic system, but right now, you got to kill a tree and send all that stuff in, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Uh, but if you're in Fulton, cab in Clayton County, you can use their online service and go through the application that way, okay? But it's still under, if you will, the umbrella of GDOT in terms of how the, what they call the UCP certified uni Uniform Certification Program. All of your information goes to GDOT, they maintain it, and they keep it there, okay? Right. Just a quick pause for those of you who are online, we're going to sign off for this portion. So all those who are, are uh, viewing us online, thank you, thank you, thank you for attending. All information will be located on CelebrateDouglasCounty.com or ConnectDouglas.com. So again, thank you for attending the Connect Douglas uh, Diversified Business Enterprise. And we want to thank our esteemed guests, such as Chris Evans, Mr. Rancy from Watershed, Ms. Latoya, uh, Latanya Ammons for, from Douglas County Procurement Department, and of course, our host, Connect Douglas uh, Director Ron Roberts and his wonderful staff. So thank you all.